The next thing that I'm going to do in my uh, C CMP and CCIE lab guide is I'm going to integrate I am in presence and in order to actually make the full use of it, I'm going to need to have some Windows workstations. So I'm going to right now create some virtual machines and deploy the Windows 10 operating system. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. We're going to create a register a VM. We'll say we'll create one. This will be my HQ work station. Guest operating system will be Windows. Um, guest OS version will be Windows 10. And I believe it's a 64 bit. That will be my data store. Two CPU is good. I'm going to give it a hundred gig disk space. Four gigs of RAM is fine. We want to go ahead and put this on the data VLAN for headquarters. And then I want to make this an ISO file. Let's go ahead and look for those. There's my Windows 10 and it is a 64 bit as we can see from the X64. So we got data VLAN HQ. That's all connected. We'll hit next. We'll hit finish. So now we're going to walk through actually getting the initial setup on the one workstation. I don't have IP connectivity to it at the moment. So I'm going to have to go through the console like we did previously on other systems. So I forgot about this issue where it will say unsuccessful EFI network. Um, and then if you let it sit long enough, it will come to this screen here with the boot manager. I'm actually going to uh, shut down this system real quick and show you what we should have done earlier to get around this. So go here, shut down system. All right, so what we want to do is go to edit. And then once this loads up, we need to go look for the area where it has the option for, um, for booting up. All right, it's under here, VM options and then boot options. And instead of EFI, we want it to say BIOS. All right, whatever. So now let's power this thing on and see if it does what we need it to do. It looks like it already. It's already showing the uh, Windows icon. All right, and we now have what we were expecting to see earlier. Now we're on this screen. I'm going to hit tab, 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 because I'm keeping all those things the same. I'll hit enter, and then I'll hit enter again to do the installation. And I have to accept the terms an agreement, so I'm going to hit tab and then space, and then I'll hit enter. So if you look up top, that first option says, uh, this option is only available when a supported version of Windows is already running on the computer, and it's not, so we're going to go down and select this option, and then I'll hit tab here. All right. And then I'll just pause the recording again while this goes through. So those little uh, steps that I had to go through completed and then it went ahead and said that the system was restarting. Now we're on this screen. I'm going to pause the recording again until we get to the next screen. Now we have the option to get going fast and you can use express settings. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hit tab until I'm on customized settings. Um, and now I'm just going to go through here and select the ones that I want. You can put whatever you want, but uh, I definitely don't want all of these. All right, so I basically just turned all of those off. And now I'm going to fill this out. All right. And then I think that this thing should just boot up and we should be ready to go with it. All right, so this is high. We're setting things up for you. This won't take long, setting up your apps. And now it says, let's start. All right, so now I'm logged in. Let's make sure it did get an IP address. So we're gonna open up the command prompt and put in IP 
config. And that's what we wanted to see. Now let's go ahead and enable the remote desktop protocol on here. We want to select who can use remote desktop. And I'm going to say, allow remote connections. I'm going to uncheck this for my lab. Let's check which users are in here. User one already has access. All right, we'll hit okay. We'll hit apply and then we'll hit okay again. And I'm already RDP'd into my Windows server in order to be able to connect to all this stuff in my lab. Let's now see if we can RDP over to that uh, Windows workstation. All right, so we have the IP address in here, 192.168.112.100. It should be able to connect to it because I think my Windows server is on the 192.168.112 network. Let's see. Yeah, 192.168.112. So what's strange is I can, I hop back over to my headquarters workstation and I can ping the default gateway 112.1 and I can even ping 112.18, which is the, uh, the Windows server. A few moments later. Now, as you can see, I am RDP'd into my Windows server. And then from that Windows server, I RDP'd into my headquarters workstation and I logged in as user one. Now what I needed to do to get the pings working is I needed to go into my uh, Windows firewall advanced security and go to inbound rules, then find the options for file and printer sharing echo requests. And once I set those to yes, I was able to ping the machine, but I still wasn't able to RDP into the Windows machine. So through the VM console, I was doing these settings, right? Uh, while also in the VM console, I went over here to allow an app or feature through the Windows firewall. I went down to look for uh, remote desktop, which we have here. And then I allowed that through the firewall. And then at that point is when I was able to RDP onto the Windows workstation. I paused my recording for a little while while I got my workstation set up the way I wanted it. I installed Firefox, I installed uh, Cisco Jabber, uh, 7-Zip, whatever other tools you might want, go ahead and install them on here. But remember, we still have the Windows Jump server, which is what I'm going to use primarily for my uh, lab because I have all my tools there already. This Windows workstation is really um, for the Jabber side of things. And, and I don't even think we really need the second Windows workstation because I should be able to install Cisco Jabber on the Windows server. And then I can have my two different um, Jabber clients, right? I can have the Windows server Jabber and I can have the workstation one Jabber as well. But I'm going to end the video out here and in the next video, we'll actually be jumping into I'm in presence and getting that all set up. I hope there was something of value here for you and I'll see you in the next video.